So the first item on the agenda is to approve the minutes of the January 31st meeting. Move we approve the minutes. Second. Second. All right, I'll, uh, roll call vote, I'll go by my screen. Um, Paul? Yes. Bob? I wasn't there, but I, could, I think I could vote on the minutes, correct? Um, it's probably good if you abstain, I think. Okay, I'll abstain then. Uh, Fred? Yes. George Ann? Yes. All right. All right, so the next item, um, and I think if, if Becky was here, it would be good because she might have a viewpoint on this, but so at, at the last select board meeting, the, the board was talking about um, concerns about, um, I guess, the, the timing of annual town meeting, um, the capital projects that are currently proposed from the town, and whether we thought, um, I guess, this group was going to have recommendations in time for you know, the annual town meeting in terms of capital projects. Um, and based on schedules that were discussed previously, the answer would be no. Um, you know, there was talk about having something by June, maybe. Yep. Um, so obviously, um, in, in terms of our planning process for the annual town meeting, um, the finance committee is going to have its, its sort of last department head board and committee meeting on March 29th. Um, and then really within the next two weeks, uh, and Paul, correct me if I'm wrong. We're going to try to we're going to try to wrap that process up, which which includes trying to figure out how to fund capital projects. Um, right. And one of our available sources of funding, mm -hmm. in addition to what we normally have, would be this um, CLFRF fund um, monies. So, as the select board talked about it, and Fred, I believe they asked for at least sort of initial recommendations on the capital projects by yeah. its next meeting, March 30th. Um, so that we at least had some idea as to what may or may not, um, what this committee may or may not recommend be funded with these monies. Um, so obviously March, did I say May? If, if I said May, I meant March 30th, right. um, which that's nine days from now. Um, so, so I guess I'm just bringing that request in front of the committee, uh, to have a discussion about, um, it, it's sort of jumping ahead in our process, but we also, you know, we talked a lot about evaluation criteria and things like that last time. So we'd kind of be jumping ahead in the process, but we also have a, uh, a deadline that's not really movable at this point. So, have, um, Brian, have any proposals or projects aside from the capital projects anything come in from any of our solicitations um well we have that we have that project ideas received document um in that listed um Four, twenty-five, twenty-six, and 27, 28, 29. You know, there's about 30 ideas, project ideas, um, some more concrete than others. Um, I think I have that up if I'll share that. Can we see that? Yep. Right, so that was sort of what we had at a at a ten thousand foot level. Yeah. Um, some of these overlap with the capital projects that are listed um, on the the capital improvement planning committee recommendations. Um, some don't, obviously, and, and obviously the capital ones are they're capital projects, right? And some of these that are listed here are, are more programmatic or or something else that I wouldn't define as as capital. Um, so 
I guess we should and, have and excuse, some. some of these look like the things that may get have other funding sources possible. You know, like engineering study on Egypt Road or the Williamsburg Road culvert replacement. Um, some of these would be would be eligible for other types of funding. Um, right, that, that's what I mean. That they're not necessarily things that we should jump into and fund ourselves before we know that there are other funding sources available. Right, and a lot of times it, it's sort of it's 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 picking one over the other, right? If we're talking about the Williamsburg Road culvert replacement, yeah, yeah, that's Chapter Ninety eligible, right? Um, but it's limited funding, so it's it, it's trying to prioritize the the limited amount of funds that we have with this program, and availability of other funds should, should I think is a is a good thing to look at when we try to figure this out. Yeah. Um. Well, you know, this is, you know, where we're sort of still operating at ground zero with this process. And we've had a few meetings. Um, and I, I, I would hope that, you know, in some way we could come together and sort of get a sense of which buckets that we'd like to see th this money go to. And in my eyes, this money is kind of like the lottery. We kind of found it. It just kind of showed up on our doorstep. And with some of that money, it makes a whole lot of sense to, you know, relieve the burden of um, expenses that would have to be dealt with from um, taxation. And it would also be kind of, need to take some of this money and use it towards um, expenses that um, are kind of one off and um, don't repeat themselves. Um, you know, we've seen in the past where you take monies that, um, well, we'll call it found monies, monies that come from, you know, the uh, school of choice, um, which is very important. Uh, but when that kind of goes away, you kind of stuck holding um, the bag, so to speak, to continue funding whatever that was funding at the time. So um, I'm personally, um, I would like to see us take and kind of divide this this um, bag of money up so that part of it goes towards um, expenses that are that the town is incurring that would serve everybody. And then uh, parts of the money go towards um, um, expenses that we may never ever see in a budget. So, um, you know, in some way, shape or form, we have to decide, um, you know, where these monies are going to go towards. If it's going to go entirely towards the budgeted items that are already there that town departments are, are already asking for that would already come from taxpayer money, um, then well, okay, but it's not, um, um, you know, it's not being used in some ways towards, towards building things that, um, you know, are special, um, put it that way. Um, you know, I wish I could describe it a little better, but I can't. Um, but I do know that over time, when we've had monies that um, that take the place of um, payment um, for expenses that are usual and customary, at some point in time, it comes back on the taxpayer, and the taxpayer has to has to step up 
and fill backfill um, what is no longer there um, in terms of expenses. So, uh, or rather in terms of revenue that, um, that is now gone. So I don't know how you, other guys feel, feel about it. If we, if we, you know, I, I mean, I don't know if we're getting down to the project level at this point. Um, and because once we go to the project level, I think it, yeah, I think it's out of our hands and um, it goes to the select board, which is not a bad thing, but that's kind of the way it goes. All right, I'll shut up. Paul, okay. Paul if I'm hearing you correctly, I think that essentially what you're saying is that this money should go to capital projects and not to either established or to establish uh, situations yeah. that would require taxpayer money down the road. Yes, yes, Fred, you said it well. Um, yeah, I think it, you know, this is kind of capital project stuff and, um, um, you know, I know we have a long list of things that want to get done. Um, and um, so that's how I think. And if it does go to capital projects, um, you know, I think ev everybody in the town will have a benefit from it um, because it, you know, it's not going to be, it's not going to hit the tax uh, rate. So, um yeah, I kind of think of it that way. Yeah, if, if I can interrupt, just looking at the list that Brian's got up, you know, something like for the school setting up a tutoring program, while very good, once this money runs out, that tutoring program is still there. It's gone. That would right. unless we either cut it off or continue to fund it. That's correct. And, you know, um, along with that, you know, you could look at from Whitley Elementary School. Uh, replace carpet with tile flooring. We were going to do that in anyway. I mean, th th that's been an ongoing project. But installing air conditioning is kind of something that's just kind of popped up. Um, could we fund it, you know, over time? Sure. But it did just pop up. Replace the dishwasher. That's kind of just a pop-up thing. Um, and like you said, Fred, you know, set up setting up the tutoring programs and summer program and all of that. There's so much in back of that that has to happen that um, you may never see that come to fruition. And three years down the road, all of a sudden, well, we'll let it go to something else. So I think if we, you know, stick to capital and it's it's specific, um, we know the dollar amount. Um, you know, those kind of things, you know, I, I don't know, I, I feel better about it in that way. So are we sort of coming up with um, criteria here? Hi, yeah, everybody. I think we're trying to. Well, <laughs> Becky, I think what we're, what we're doing is, Brian started this by saying that we're running up against a hard deadline for this year's budget. So we have to make decisions on whether or not to fund particularly capital projects out of this money or send it to the finance committee to find where it would be paid for it other paid for otherwise. And that deadline is next week. Yeah. So that, that's that's really where that's what's this started from is we need to make decisions in this committee whether or not to recommend spending some of this money on this year's capital projects. Gotcha. And um, and this is the, who's sort of had their eye on those capital projects the most? Is that um, select board? Sorry, I'm-, I'm the, There's a capital projects committee. Okay. okay. And did they have any um, like particular favorites or did they just give us everything? I mean, I see the everything here, but what if there's like- uh, That, committee which I am a liaison for sit on okay. has set priorities for the various proposed capital projects they set them in, in a b and c oh yeah I did read that priorities um, yeah. and that that's been done 
So the sort of general, so, I mean, it would be, you say it's a week from now, <laughs> is there? The, this will, yeah, the finance committee select board have to start finalizing these things in a week. Yeah. Um, Cause you know, it's, I almost feel like that's a group like Brian, the other groups that we're sort of reaching out to, which is, you know, oh, well you have a proposal. Why don't you give us the proposal um, with the, the, the reasons why, and I, you know, a week is a very short period of time to do that, but it's awfully nice if they've been working on it as long as they have for them to sort of give us a sense of like one or two that are the biggest, unless, unless they're sort of envisioning that we're going to use most or all the money. I'd like to <clears throat> bring up the water one again. Um, Due to the fact that we had to add extra filters, <clears throat> three new pumps in the pump house. Um, well, we've been displaced our area there to store equipment. That's why we need the garage. But without the generator in town, we have no water protection for fire. And you could say, okay, I live in West Waitley. That's still going to be an important part of your fire protection due to the fact that they have to pump water out of a hydrant into these tanks that are like portable swimming pools <clears throat> and refill the trucks. So without that generator, in the event that the power goes down, uh, the whole town basically has no fire protection. Uh, you may be if you're lucky, there's nothing up West Lately deep enough to throw holes in a brook. So <clears throat> that's one issue. The other issue is, I would say, now we have basically over 400 customers. No one would be able to flush their toilets. If the school was used for an emergency area, those facilities in there that need water would not be able to be used. So even though there's a generator at the school, it wouldn't be supplied with water. So again, we're lacking toilet facilities, drinking water, um, whatever in there. So I know these are not on the capital planning list, but um, to me, they're vital things that this affects the whole town. The shed is needed too, because um, like I stated before, there's no place to put the lawnmowers, the weed whackers, you can't store gas in those, um, in the pump house, oil, uh, if anybody has anything to add to it, or I'm willing to listen. Well, well I just, you know, um, the, the whole issue about supplying water to the town and having pr fire protection is, I think, very important. Um, and... Um, being able to use the Whaley Elementary School as an emergency shelter again is very important. Um, and I don't know why the Capital Planning Committee has not um, done a more, um, you know, thorough or have had that come across their desk to deal with. Because um, it wasn't presented. Okay. So okay. therefore- in defense. It, this has been on my list of things to do. And it, once again, um, doing all the filters that we had to add in there, every time they got kicked off the list or bumped off due to the fact that we had to spend money on the pumps and on the filters. And there were other uh, air compressors and different things that had to be added to it. So it kind of got knocked off the water department's list in priority. So what was more important, getting the generator in my mind or get adding these pumps so that we didn't have to expend so much electricity there so that we'd be able to extract the water from the ground. You know, it's a toss up as to how you want to look at this. Well, and in everybody's mind, you know, I'm still looking out for the town. It's not that, you know, I got a high priority um, in regards to these two items, but they're essential to run this department. Yeah, I, I, 
I'm 100% in agreement with you. Um, my only issue is that there are no numbers here. There, there are no costs. Those costs have not been vetted. Um, and, and, and I don't, and right now, this is kind of like, you know, the- uh, The cost is $70,000. Well, how come take, it's not here? Well, it's not on that sheet. It, it, I had given it to Brian, I think. I think Wayne had given him a, an estimate also. Yeah, the select board has an, I think the select board has an estimate. Right. Okay. So it's seventy thousand dollars for yeah. the generator, just the generator. The generator and the shed it included. The whole price is about seventy thousand. And again, okay, you know when we go to get a quote from a, from the generator and things, you know it could go up next week. That's what they keep telling us. Sure, sure, I believe that. Um, now the um. um you know, $70,000 for the generator, you know, I can see, in fact, where it would benefit not only the water department, but the entire town. Now, George Ann, you have to sort of carve out, carve out of this, not the $70,000, but the other points in here about how much of that is really, um, supposed to be undertaken supposed to be paid for by the users of the water supply well we can up the rates but that i don't believe in the course of a year um due to the fact that the rainfall affects our rates in the summer um if there is no rain Everybody's watering their lawns, gardens, whatever. So right. I can't say that we have a standard rate in the sense that people use it. It fluctuates. And the same thing with the greenhouses. Mm -hmm. So um, and that 70000 by the way, includes a propane tank installed um, and electrical to hook it up. So it's not just um, a generator and a garage. It's the hookup and the, the, and the tank, I forgot, Wayne had gotten two quotes. One tank was like $9,000 for a propane tank. All right. So, so are we, so we're jumping into talking about proposals now, or are we going to talk about the criteria first? Um, well, I think the criteria is certainly important. Yeah, because I feel like, you know, I we have talked about wanting to make sure that we're fair about, you know, here we have this chunk of money, we have a town we want to serve, we want to be transparent about it, we want to make sure to, that we're looking at, I guess you could say apples to apples, you know, okay, if, if we have these criteria and we're going to approach each of the projects, right. um, and this project is, uh, you know, this amount of money, um, this is why this money is appropriate because it's not going to be paid for, as you said, Paul, it's not going to be paid for by um, water user money, which that, that is a very good point that there are systems that already have money coming in where it's mm -hmm. appropriate to, to serve that entity. Um, it's going to serve most or if not all of the town. Um, maybe it even will bring back money in the future because there are some projects where if we invest now, um, uh, it could bring back money in one way or another, either because there's less interest rate or something like that. So that's always something to keep in mind. Um, so yeah, I, I, I like the idea of making sure we have our criteria, make sure we're being fair. Um, I'd, lo I'd love to have a, an apples to apples list of here are the projects. And I feel like we're still in the process of looking. And that's why it's a little like, I, I guess I didn't realize that we, that there was, um a week we only have a week to to make a kind of a big decision yeah, uh, yeah. i mean where are we can i just that, that? can i just ask one question of everyone on this call do you feel that this money should benefit the entire town 100 percent of the taxpayers in the town. 
yes or no? I'm going to start, well, now, and I'm going to say, for, for me, it's yes. What would you spend it on that wouldn't benefit the entire town? That doesn't matter. That that that's that is not what we're discuss. That that's not the question I'm asking. The question I'm asking is whether or not you feel the this money should benefit the entire tax paying population of this town. I agree. Okay, this one. Fred, so there's Fred, two what's yeses. What's your thought on it, Fred? I, I I would agree, but I think that we may run into a definitional problem of what is benefiting the entire town. No question. That I think from what we've heard from the water department, their definition of benefiting the whole town may not be someone else's. But that, yeah, that's where we come in to decide that. And that's where an apples to apples I find very helpful. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love apples, but um, I, I like the, the call, describing it as benefiting the town as a whole, rather than betting, benefiting all of the taxpayers. Because the town as a whole, I think of, then, then we start talking about like capital projects, like not every taxpayer in the town may want it, but it you one could argue that it is benefiting the whole town. Like paving roads benefits the whole town. Not, maybe not every taxpayer says, I'm so glad you're doing that, but it is, I, I would say it's pretty easy to argue that it benefits the whole town. It and, and I think you can also argue, say, benefiting, you know, doing something for the schools mm -hmm. is benefiting the whole town, even though not everyone has school-aged children. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the, 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 what is it? The, um, the common, um, commons, help me philosophers. Common good? No, the, um, the tragedy of the commons or the, the, comedy of the of the commons let's say <laughs> and, but the, the difficult tragedy of the commons does come in particularly yeah. with the water department because their poor service notwithstanding the providing water for fire their mm -hmm. core service is not to everyone in the town right correct yeah. so so correct but we're, I mean, again, if it, I think to have a propose, have like a stack of proposals, uh, virtual or literal, <laughs> that we could then look at. Um, and I, I mean, I hate to do this, but I think, you know, the proposal givers do the work of writing it up so that we can then have it be something we can compare. <clears throat> and I think you were talking about before, like having basically an RFP which I know Fran had gotten a little nervous about, but I think we can, I think um, groups can write up their things on something somewhat um, um, formal so that we can truly compare um, different proposals. It seems fair, it seems like that's the fair way to do it. I think it's the, I think it, it has, it, it has a, uh it has somewhat of a fairness um, position to it. Um, but I feel that our charge here, um, it, it, in some ways it's to re recommend or not recommend specific projects. But until we, till we get prior to that point, we have to say where, where, these, where we feel these monies, this bag of money, should go towards this bag of money was given to every resident of this town. That bag of money was not given to, you know, a specific entity within the town. So how do we want to spend it? Now, if we don't, don't want to come out and say that any expenditure should benefit everybody in town, well, that's fine. Then what is the percentage? Do we want to do, do we want to say 50% of this money should go to everybody in town and the other 50% should go to one-off important, deemed important expenses um, that are being proposed? And we want to go 50-50 or do we want to go 60-40, 70-30? You have to corral the, this thing so that, in fact, 
when people are, if we get to that RFP point, which I kind of think is pie in the sky, but if we do, then we have to say, what does this, what, what does this RFP fall under? What category does it fall under? Um, so that we, in fact, at that point can take a look at the entire amount and whittle it down by the expense being asked for. Because if not, we're just dealing with a big bag of money and we're saying, I want it. No, I want it. You get it. No, you get it. Well, what we're saying as a team is, okay, if you put it in, we've said this amount of money is for projects that benefit everybody. And this amount of money is for projects that have more of a specificity to them in regards to the ask, the individuals asking for that money. So I'm just trying to bring this thing to an, to a, to some kind of an agreement between all of us because we, this is this is kind of circular motion. So, um, I, so, um, so Brian, you on the um, the the. I guess it's an Excel sheet. You had you had written up. This is from you, right? The um, possible evaluation criteria. So we have that, and we have um, we have some proposals that have already come in, right? Like I know um, Board of Health did, and um, um, sounds like the Water Department has sent some in. And then we have this, and and those. I don't think any of those are really time sensitive. But then we have the the um capital things that are more time sensitive um and it, it seems like a good use of our time at some point is going to be to use these evaluation criteria and either we're doing all this work or we've given these criteria to those who are sending proposals and they could just fill in the blanks that could help us a lot right like um they could explain each of these i mean so that could be a form that people fill out. Is that I, I think that looking at the evaluation criteria, that would be for this committee. I don't think that the okay. people who are submitting proposals, they're, they're gonna say it's needed <laughs> and you should do it. But couldn't they say why? I mean- Oh, they, they, they will have to say why, okay. but right. nonetheless, it'll be self-serving and we would have to evaluate it anyway. But that I yeah I, I guess maybe I'm being lazy and if if they put it in there then we can read it as opposed to all right let's look at what they're saying and so um, that's fine I'm not going to argue that one way or another I just thought maybe it would be easier if they filled it I, out <laughs> I, I think and I think Brian would probably agree with me well it's nice to have these discussions about philosophy and the like we've got decisions we have to make on individual expenditures today right in advance of a meeting next week. Right. And I think, I would think the place to start is with the projects that have been submitted to and considered by the capital projects, projects committee to see, okay, those, these have come out of there. Are these things that we think this money should fund or leave it either not make any opinion on them or say they should be funded elsewhere. Yeah, I guess that's- I, I, and, and I, I don't like putting that pressure on this committee, but it's there. We're under the gun to make decisions on individual projects. And I don't know that we got necessarily the time to have a big philosophical dis discussion about, uh, you know, yeah. the, you know, the philosophy of giving the money. Yep, right. Uh, uh, can I ask Brian Brian a question? Oh, uh, was someone else going to jump in? Uh, Bob wanted to come in. Bob, Bob, go ahead. So I agree with Paul. I think I think it should be used for everybody in town. The monies. I totally agree there. the pr The problem. I, this is my first meeting because the last one was whatever, and the one before that. But I, I my personal opinion is we have these list of things that we, you know, I could pull it up on my phone on the moratorium list that lists all the projects from, from you know, the Hurley Heath Field down to the other department, which equals 427,000. But it'll be nice if we were 
all together as a group in a room, whiteboards. Yeah. We we can talk. Right. We yeah. can talk. You know, we could talk amongst ourselves. We're not okay. Who you know who can see my hand up on this? You know, I didn't really think that we need to be together to I don't know take care of things. That's my opinion. Yep. Make it easier. Um. I, I absolutely agree with you. Um, unfortunately, we're stuck with what we're stuck with. Um, yeah. And but two questions to Brian. Number one, can can you give us the total amount that we have here? Four. What is it? Four. I think it's four hundred fifty-eight thousand. Four fifty-eight k. And I or think four fifty-four. Said... Four hundred fifty something. Okay. You said earlier that we do not have to spend this at in one fell swoop. Is that correct? We have like five years, right? We have to obligate it by December 31st, 2024, and we have to expend it by 2026. Okay. Um, okay, fine. Now, with that said, does it make sense for this group to say, okay, we're going to spend a certain percentage this year, maybe a certain percentage next year, and have it completely spent by the following year or next year. Um, so I would throw that out. I, I guess I kind of feel like there's, there's, I guess I kind of see two things, right? I see we have this time sensitive request because of, uh, of the budget process and right. which I don't think will come close to using up all of that amount of money. Um, and, and maybe it's that, that some, that, that some is recommended now and the rest is left for, you know, uh, um, the process that we're talking about that will probably take a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the committee could make no recommendation to the select board and the select board could, could, could do whatever it, it feels, I guess, is right. in the best interest of the town. Right, right. Um, we could just say it's, it doesn't work for timing and mm -hmm. we don't have a recommendation. Um, I don't know how you feel about that, Fred, but. Well, just so everyone's aware, the select board has already taken a little bit of the money and allocated it. The, what was it, Brian? 5,000 towards emergency. Response to COVID if we needed to purchase something quickly. Right. Sure. So the, the select board has already taken a little, you know, uh, appropriated a little bit of the money out of here. And I want to make sure this committee knew that. So yeah. I don't I don't know if that okay. takes us down to, you know, from 458 to 453. I don't know what the number remaining is, but there has been a little bit of money uh, sliced off of this. So Fred, you have a sense of the, sorry, Joe Jan, I know you have a question too. I just, I'm, I feel like one of the big questions with the, the capital expense or the capital yeah. proposals is what would the chance have been of the town funding any of those if this money wasn't available? Do you have a sense the, of that? The likelihood is for the proposals that got an A priority from the capital expenditure committee, those would be funded. Okay. Some way, somehow. Yeah. Okay. Paul, I don't think you disagree with it. That's no, historically, I, if the capital expenditure committee says, right, we, you know, it's a high priority, mm -hmm. it will get funded. It will get funded in one way or another. Although, when we get to the last meeting, when we look at the impact on taxation as best we can, um, that may change things. Now, um, you know, with that said, um, the, um, the, um, the capital items, you know, at least from my perspective, have been in some way vetted. You know, we've got people on the ground who are checking into pricing, who are looking at, you know, where this fits when and, and all those little specific things that give you confidence when you're saying, okay, go for it. And when you look at these 
when you look at these numbers, you also let, let's also take into consideration that there's pressure on the tax dollars in town this particular year because of the increase that we have from Frontier Regional High School that we didn't have last year or the year before that. So that's that's a significant amount that we have to absorb and pay for. Um, it, so, if I can yeah. propose, in in light of that, if we sort of cut to the chase, Brian put up the list of things. Why don't we start going down this list? Good. With, you know, is this something we'd want to fund? And Brian can fill us in on what the possible alternatives are because the you see the dollar the estimated costs there right there are other sources of funding for some of these things this is not mm -hmm. entirely our list right yeah that uh, uh, i think that's a great idea fred um sorry and georgiana can, what i know you had your hand raised what were you going to say uh i'd like to add one more thing to this list um now that we have a grant writer I think some money should be put aside for down the road for engineering studies on projects. Um, they have to do the Christian Lane Bridge over and other, well, let's say they did the loop at Egypt Road down the road, that some funds be set aside so that you could get a <clears throat> grant. Without that money, we're losing money. <clears throat> so with the grant, we could make money by getting you know, some federal or state funding. I, I think that's a good idea. And a, that's really for the finance committee. The finance committee in the past has said, a, has established a vehicle stabilization fund yep. to spread out payments on or to, so we know vehicle payments are coming. We'll have a fund to take them from. We started to establish a building or we, when I was there, I'm not there anymore. Yep. Established yep. a building stabilization fund just last year to start putting together at least a little money, particularly towards the highway department garage. What so it's up? it's something we've done, something like that. Yeah, but what so. if a grant is available now and we don't have the funding for the engineering study to apply for? then either we lose it or we figure out a way to find the money. Uh, losing it just... Is... Well, I'm saying that generally we will, you know, like with the uh, Hurley Heath Park on the, the top item here, uh, some money had to be moved around to, sh to from one fund to another to show that we had the money and that money after we get the grant will be transferred back to where it came from. But if right. Sometimes you have to play some games with money to show it in one account rather but than another. But if you have fund for this, you wouldn't have to do it and you could apply, you know, quicker. You know, I think I, Brian, you can speak to what, whether we've been losing anything by not having uh, money for studies set aside. Um, so the so the biggest the biggest challenge for for infrastructure grants is is the requirement that that projects be pre engineered essentially. So for things like MassWorks grant, what was the old Strap grant and Small Bridge program and things like that. Well, the Small Bridge program I covered, but uh, it's mostly for infrastructure projects um, that they require design upfront. So while I think it, while I think it's it's a good investment to make, especially if the project's needed. Um, I mean, I think that sort of falls under the if we're if we're splitting this process into two in terms of looking at capital projects tonight in a larger process later. I think that's where this would probably, at least in my mind, fall into um, where we would spend some of this monies on on engineering studies um, as a possibility. In some of the some of the items that we have on that list talk, talk about, right? Talk about engineering for Egypt Road Loop, engineering for the Williamsburg Road culvert, things like that. So, and obviously the Christian Lane Bridge is one lane. So um, that's gonna need attention at some point. But yeah, it, it, it is true that we need to have engineering for some of these grants. So, um, and some of them we don't. 
but right. infrastructure is the biggest one. And what what kind of is there a general um, amount that that looks like for an engineering study, or is that too vague a question? Um, it, it's difficult. Sometimes it's ten to twelve percent of the project cost. Um, so you, you're starting with a really a really broad range of, of costs, but I mean. It, could, it can get expensive really quick. Uh, I'll give you an example. The, we're doing some engineering right now for uh, a, the, a culvert on Christian Lane between the, the fire station and Castaways, and that's almost $100,000 in engineering costs. Um, but we were lucky to get a grant for that because it we, um, we made a endangered species and cold water fisheries brook argument that we were able to get funding for it. Um, and we were lucky because the amount that we got was about half of what it costs. And then we uh, begged and pleaded for more money, which they just funded. So, but it, it's around a hundred thousand for just engineering for that culvert replacement. That is extraordinary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the project's a million dollars, we'll say for putting a pipe underneath the ground there. That's a good guess. Um, <laughs> we have to, everything that we do has to be open bottom uh, and meet uh, mass stream crossing standards. So, Everything that's a pipe is pretty much going to be an open bottom box culvert or bigger from this point forward. Um, so, and, and, and that's why Christian Lane is probably going to remain one lane for quite a while because it's very expensive to rebuild that bridge. Right. All right. Um, so, should we go through this? Yeah. Why don't we, we go through the list yeah. and at least get some, yes. like, you know, to, See just if we want to say yes to certain things or let me just to, to yeah. jump in really quickly if we were to fund everything on this list it's about 30 percent of the total monies that we have so take that into consideration as we have right. well that's why i want to go through it because we're not going to have to fund this whole list right because some of them are some of these things are funded elsewhere right Brian, why don't we start you know, with Hurley Park improvements? You've got $123,000 cost. How much is that covered elsewhere? So 100% should be covered, um, assuming that people vote for it at the special town meeting for, it'll be half with CPA funds. It's a special town meeting and the other half will be grant funded. So mm -hmm. that doesn't require any so is there any way we could just cut to things that are not going to be funded? Because, I mean, the, it's nice to see what sort of things the capital group is working on, but um, it feels like. Well, I, I think it's important that the people on this committee see, you know, go through item by item. And we can, like, if something's fully covered, we cover it in 30 seconds. Okay. <laughs> just, just say, you know, like that, the one we just did. CPA mm -hmm. grant. Yeah. It's done. We don't have anything to do with that project. Okay. And that takes 123 of that 300,000 away immediately. That feels great. Okay. Bring it on. Uh, All right. Floor replacement. Uh, free cash. <laughs> yep. Um, so do you want me to just go through and tell you what the alternative yeah, sources go, are? Go through yeah. and say where it where it would no. be charged if it's coming like, out of free cash, money. i would say things coming out of free cash are things that we should consider oh okay <clears throat> so um elementary school dishwasher um free cash town hall automatic door openers free cash new highway department tractor free cash new hybrid police cruiser probably vehicle stabilization fund treasure collector financial management software license probably free cash okay. like Library fire door replacement, probably free cash. Uh, water department truck savings and water department tank cleaning and expect inspection will come out of the enterprise fund. Um, cemetery fencing replacement, if it passes at the annual uh, special town meeting on Wednesday, that will be covered by CPA funds. Elementary school classroom air conditioning phase one, probably free cash. New highway department truck to replace the F-550, that's been deferred. Uh, Keith has pulled that. Um, Patron computers at the library, um, it would likely come from free cash and granite bench installations. Um, again, if it passes at the special town meeting, it will come from CPA funds. Oh, okay. 
Right. So let's go back and what are the free cash ones again? It'll be the elementary school. Four, yeah. Okay, it'll be the town hall automatic door opener. Yeah, and the dishwasher. And the dishwasher. Um, and then tractor. the uh, the tractor. Right, yeah. right, right. Um, okay, well, let's just, can you just add, you know, we need to add these up to see what, so the free cash that we're going to do is going to be 22, 21, 12, 42, 35, and then we got 5, 10, and 11. We got, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. Library door, that will be in. Um, water department truck savings. What is that? Uh, it's money that they, they put 5,000 aside each year. So they build up the fund for when they oh. want to buy a so new truck. So that's already in there. So that's, our, so that's, that's, okay. So that's spoken for. Storage tank cleaning and inspection. Well, that's the enterprise fund. That's enterprise fund. So those two are, those two are not on the list. Um, cemetery fencing replacement. Okay, so we got 11. That, that's CPA. CPA. Oh, that's CPA. So take that off. Okay, now we got the Whaley Elementary School air conditioning phase one. We should one. talk about that one separately. Just Okay. Um, and he's pulling the 94 out and the new patron computers, 5K, that's free cash, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. And equipment quick, quick. installations is CPA fund, right? Yep. Okay. Quick calculation tells me that's about 140,000. Okay. Okay. Are you going to include the water, 70,000 or not? I would say in my thoughts would be at this point no because we didn't get a proposal I and mean, we can consider it separately but that's not going to be on the agenda next week for the finance committee because it didn't right. come through the capital improvements committee right so they don't have the time urgency of the other projects which are being considered through the capital improvements committee yeah, yeah but i said it i collect it yes but but it Paul, does the finance committee have that proposal? $70,000 for? From the water department. Not that I'm aware of. No, there, there would have been, there would have never been, it would have never went in front of the finance committee at this no, point. No, it's got to go to cap, capital first. Well, um, there, typically it would have gone through the capital, yeah, the capital process. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I mean, I don't think we have the um, the right to um, say yay or nay to any kind of expense that at least hasn't been, you know, reviewed by either the select board or the, um, you know, the, um, you know, the committee, uh, the cap, the cap capital committee. Um, so, and it doesn't mean it won't happen, but we're only we're right now by approving what we just spoke and that, that has been spoken spoken to. It, it, I mean, we're only spending one hundred forty thousand of it, um, which leaves us over three hundred thousand still in the kitty. Um, for, it leaves about four hundred. That oh no, three hundred. You're right, three hundred. It's, so it's we, also we just, it's also very helpful to understand you know, with these descriptors and comparing the, the different proposals, it's helpful to understand that some of these are also already going to be funded by other sources. And yep. um, I, I have to say that um, if, you know, the, the water is its own self-funded entity, if I'm not mistaken. So um, um, as, you know, I, I'm, as is in some ways, the library is a little bit separate from the town, even though it's a benefit to the town. So those are, those sorts of things, it feels like we need to mull over a little more as opposed to say town hall, which most if not everybody uses and the idea of having it be, um, 
easier for people who have a harder time going through it seems like a you know really beneficial thing so yeah, yeah. being able to to mull these things over together is really helpful yeah. and understanding that they wouldn't get funded otherwise or they would. yeah i think it would be it you'd be hard pressed as a committee to say that we feel good about the Hurley Park accessibility costs, and yet we don't feel good about the library. Um, you know, they're both, both of them are town assets that, you know, we need to, we need to support. Um, and sure the water department yeah we need to some people need to have water we need to be protected all of those things but all of that has a process and you got to go through the process so that it can go up in black and white so that we're not saying to somebody yeah that's a good idea let's spend money on that no we can't do that because it's got to be in black and white it's got to be in front of you and it's and you got to see it and because when somebody down the road comes and asks you how come you spent money on that? You can't go, well, it was kind of a good idea. Well, well prove it. So should we go through each of the free, the ones that you described as free money, Brian, and each of us vote on it. And if we have unanimous, that's easy. And if not, maybe discuss it. it that if I can, just to short circuit this, I would like to propose or move that we fund the projects that have been presented that would otherwise be paid for out of free cash. And well, I will. I, so I, I need, I, I have to apologize because I don't remember each of the ones you okay, said. Okay, I, I was gonna go yeah. through okay. which ones they cover. Waitley so School floor replacement, Waitley School new dishwasher to replace the, I think it was original to the building dishwasher. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Town Hall, Automatic door openers. Mm -hmm. Sorry, let me put dollar amounts on each of these. Twenty-two thousand for the floors, twenty-one thousand for the dishwasher, twelve thousand for automatic door openers, mm -hmm. forty-two thousand for a new highway department tractor. The tractor, the capital committee looked looked at that, and it's it's out of service as much as it is in service at this point, and impossible to get parts for the old one. Right. Uh, treasure collector finance management software. Lynn is working off of ancient software that doesn't allow remote entry or there are all kinds of things it can't do and desperately needs replacing. Uh, $5,000 for a library door replacement. I would not propose the air conditioning because I think there's some questions about the efficiency of individual splitters as opposed to a more central system. So even though that was a free cash item, I would not want to propose that. I think that may need some more study. How about uh, and new patron computers at the library. Those are the items. <sighs> that I would. And how much was the computer? Sorry, I know it's right there in front of me. Okay, but... the, the computers was $5,000. So we're talking 22 plus 21 is 43, 53, 95 with the tractor, 120, 130 with the collector software, 535, 100, it's $140,000 total. Um, I have a couple of questions, and I, I suppose anyone can answer, but I'm guessing Fred might know the most about it. Um, um, I'm just curious, what do we use the tractor for in town? Everything. Yeah, I kind of figured, but I just was curious. <laughs> it, it's, yeah. used, it's used a lot. Brian, yeah. you can probably speak to this. I, Keith would be the one to speak to it mostly, but there are... It emit lots and lots of uses. I can't, Keith would be the one who could detail them for you. But in my experience, if Keith put in a proposal to the Capitol Committee that 
seem very reasonable. And honestly, at this point in the history of the town, if Keith says he needs it, I believe him. I mm. completely, that makes sense. So I guess I'm a little surprised that that's not something that would automatically just get paid for through through you know well it's a, it's a cap it's a capital expenditure which yeah. means that well, it would, would which yeah. means it goes through mm -hmm. that process rather than through it's not a a regular expenditure right so it has to be a special consideration yeah so so that would have to be in Keith's budget and if he put that in his budget of forty two thousand dollars as a one off one year um it would be. It would be unusual, which is why we have the capital request process. Sorry, Bob. Oh, that's all right. I just, I just think if we, if we, if, if we're going to fund this with the extra monies, so we wouldn't have to take out one hundred forty thousand out of free cash that we could use. That rainy day, you can always use that for a rainy day versus using the the special monies and stuff. Correct? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. Well, that's true. Yeah. And, and in the case of the air conditioners, mm -hmm. there's there's going to be some grants and some things through Eversource. So I'm, I'm not sure what the percentage is, but we're working on that with also at, at Frontier yeah. for the second yeah. and third mm -hmm. floors. They're starting off with the third floor first, which yeah. is the hottest. Mm -hmm. But that's what we're working on. But Eversource is going to have some type of rebate. We don't know how much it is yet, but we're working on it since the... Right. Well, that, that's for January. Frontier. These, these are what these are. I know wait, the just, elementary. But yeah. We also have the air conditioners for the elementary school on on priority B there. That's the only yeah. reason I was just saying that, that yeah. there could be another funding source down the road for that, that amount of money. Possibly. Yeah, I think there are enough questions about it that I would want to take it out of this group for this committee. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Then uh, the other question I have is about the um, the software because um, this has come up within um, the Board of Health um, that there's a lot of um, uh, need for software in other departments. And I just wonder not having, well, doing medical software, but are there ways that there can be a more comprehensive upgrading of software in town rather than just there? I mean, it, it sounds really important to do. Um, and, and I just wonder if you guys have any thoughts about that, about. Um, this is the essentially tax billing right. software. Um, and Brian, you can answer to the, how integrated it could be with anything else or is it standalone? Um, I, I mean, the most it's gonna integrate towards is, is any of the assessing data. Um, but other than that, it, it's pretty specialized too to the treasure collector department, treasure collector position. Um, so if there's other, I mean, originally this was gonna be, um, you know, proposed as funding through free cash. So obviously if there's other departments that have, you know, software needs, then that's definitely, you know, something that should be brought up as part of the, you know, the annual budgeting process. Yeah, because it, it's, I, integrating it seems like a really smart thing i, I mean reflecting on it from, from the um medical record standpoint i will tell you that when you don't integrate systems it's horrible um i mean i don't want to delay something that's really important for um, them to have and you end up really um struggling if you don't have an integrated system then you have to patch together so yeah. And it would just be something to think about. You know, we can look at all, all of these expenses as being investments in our own town. But that particular expenditure, $35,000, could mean, um, you know, a quicker recoup of taxes that are owed the town um, and tracking taxes that are owed the town. So that's truly... Um, an investment that has um, a turnaround, um, you know, for us. So where do you want to go? Brian, can I ask one more question? Did you say at the beginning of the meeting that there was a handout to different people in the town and they might have filled out something for 
other requests for for this money? Is that what you said earlier? Uh, yeah, Becky alluded to the, the the project request form that we had sent out probably back we, in has anybody December. Gone through, yeah, December. Has anybody, yeah. gone through, has anybody gone through all those yet? Yep, that's the list of them. Okay, but nothing's on, is this, whatever's on that list is right in front of us here on this that people filled out or is there other things that are not part of this list that we What's, should look at? Can you see the list that I'm sharing coronavirus local fiscal recovery funds? Yep, from 122 down to 4,700 bucks for those granite benches. That's the right. list, that's what I'm looking at right here. Hold on a second. On my screen. Yeah, no, yeah, Brian, you have the capital projects yes. list up. How about that? Nothing yet. Yeah, that's. Did but it change? a lot of those don't have dollars attached yet. Right. So to and answer Bob's question, that's yeah. this is the the ideas that we received, but they're I ideas, right? I don't have it on my screen. I just have a big green square with nothing in the middle. Huh. What about anybody else? I, I see it. it. Yeah. I, I'm seeing it. I see it. Maybe I have to hit a button here or something. Let me. Here, I'll stop. I'll try. I'll stop sharing. Try again. Did it work, Bob? No. Yeah, Brian, yeah, you have to put that up again. You're muted, Bob. Can you hear me now? Yep. Yeah. Gotcha. So the list in, is the list in front of me was part of what we got together for everything that we sent out or people sent back in, right? Right. Yep. Okay. Can you scroll down there, uh, Brian? Yep. So there's some overlap on, on what's on the on what's on the capitals and what's not. Um. The just a just a quick question and. You know, somebody else said Christian Lane Bridge which is that's not that's not going to be paid by the town is that going to be paid by by somebody the state um, unless unless something changes we own that bridge okay yeah and we know it needs replacing because we've done studies on it and stuff correct I would imagine <coughs> engineering studies well, uh, Mass DOT does bridge inspections, and they told us to go to one lane. Oh, okay. Got it. Okay. I just I just wanted to ask. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a thing, isn't it? Um, but anyway, so these, what the capital projects listed, those are the ones that have sort of the time constraint of the week. And then these others are the broader list of right things. the others we can we can consider at some other date that you know without this Correct. meeting going to three hours i am um, like and like i said i i regarding the software you know i'm i am no expert in software other than the stuff that i've struggled with here but i know that i've talked to a few other groups specifically the board of health but i think others too that there are software issues um in more places and um and we've been talking about integrated systems and right. i don't know how many opportunities there are within a town like waitley to integrate different departments and maybe it's not something i mean it's not something i am any expert in but if this rings any bells with anyone else it seems really important um i don't know how much um the board of uh, the um, select board and um, and the town hall knows that the other departments need software, but it it seems like a conversation that should be had before it's purchased in case there are integration right. opportunities. It's, it sounds like a select board item that yeah. should be that should be discussed um, on their agenda. So, but but for us right here and now. When you look at that software being 
asked of the town by Lynn. It's been researched. The pricing is there. We know if we spend it, what we're going to get. So unless it's in black and white in front here, then it's kind of out of our reach. And in order for it to get into our reach, it has to go through capital or it has to go through the select board. And, um, and all we can do is comment on what's in front of us. So cir circling back, I'd like to, again, move. We've got seven projects that otherwise would be funded by free cash, which I outlined before. I can read them again if you, if you want to be certain of them. The total $142,000. I'm a fan. I, I, what I, I, just to make it clear, what I'm trying to say is I, I, want, I completely agree on funding the um, the software. I, I guess if there's just a way we can tag this as an opportunity um, for town to recognize that there are other departments that are looking for software. And if there's any way to integrate, that'd be great. Yeah, it, 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 as Brian said, this is yeah. strictly the tax software, tax bill software. I, that re For security reasons, you don't necessarily want integrating, you know, with every other department absolutely. absolutely right but or but with assessments or, you know and um yeah. anyway I, so yeah, so that we so that we stay within the law and that um everything is above board and can be can be uh viewed um fred are you making a motion for this committee to spend $140,000 of this money on, and we should name the specific items on here. I, you do I, I would make that motion. I don't want to though, given that this is a recommendation to the select board. Right. And I shouldn't be recommend making the proposal that I'm gonna to recommend to myself. Okay. All I'll right. make the recommendations, Paul, or Bob, a motion. Go. go. You want okay. me to do it? Make a yes, motion yes. to yes, accept. Please. The following, should I read them off? Yes. Um, I, I counted seven projects. You got seven, Fred? Yeah. If I make a mistake, just jump in. Yep. Uh, yep. Waitley Elementary floor replacement, 22,000. Yep. yep. Waitley Elementary school dishwasher, 21,000. Yes. yes. Town yes. Hall automatic door openers. Uh, looks like there's six of them for 12,000. Yes. yes. Uh, new highway department tractor, 42,000. Yes. Treasurer collector, financial management software license, uh, 35,000. Yes. Fire, uh, library fire door replacement, 5,000. Yes. And it, did we mention the cemetery fencing replacement? Nope, that's CP coming out of CPA. CPA. Okay, not the air conditioning. No, nope. the truck nope. has been re the truck has been taken. And uh, the uh, new patrons computers, four of them for right. the library for 5,000. That's the last one. Okay. You got seven. And that total is what? Is 142. Okay. 142,000. So That's Bob, my motion. Okay, Bob, made, does anybody second that motion? I do. Okay, and could we have, Brian, do you want to roll call? Want to take the roll call? Sure. Uh, Bob. Yes. Becky. Yes, I, like I said, I would love to throw out there just the discussion for the um, software. Well, well, we'll talk to Lynn and see if there's any integration. Yeah. That's all I'm asking, thank possibilities. you. Possibilities. Paul? Yes. Fred? Abstain because I don't want to recommend to myself. I don't vote. And George Ann. Yes. Okay. All right. So that passes. Good. Okay. I, I, what's cool about this is we, I, I think we've just sort of tested a 
structure. So I think this is a really good way to approach this because we have um, we've used criteria. Um, right. So be good to to approach uh, future um, meetings first by getting a list together and then um, and then. Yep. And, and we can certainly not have to do this under the gun of right. budget time. Right. But yep. I think as Paul has shown, we need to have a solid financials of what we're being asked to spend yep. and be solid alternatives of what other funding sources might go into this, not just someone, you know, any department saying, we want this money, please give it to us, without so, us knowing that, yep. you know, there may be CPA money, there may be grant money that could offset that, which would not require us to put in the full amount. Right. So back to what we were talking about before in terms of the criteria, maybe we don't send out the um, the list exactly as Brian wrote, but I think giving people a framework so that they understand what we're looking for. I mean, yes, Fred, I yeah. completely agree that if we ask, do you think, do you need this money? They're going to say yes, but we could yeah. say, why do you need the money? And um, have you exhausted other sources? And maybe they're going to say yes too, but I still think asking that now, question. I, is the reasonable one. I think a key question is if you don't get this money from us, Will this project get done? And you know, if you don't get this money from us, where else you might you get the money from? You know, where? Yeah. What are your other potential funding sources? Yeah. Yes. And not only that, but how much <coughs> legwork? How how much legwork has the requester done in regards to monies being asked for? You gotta, you know, you. It, it has to go through a process. And I think that either the capital planning or the select board has to see that, that the, um, you know, the T's were crossed, the I's were dotted and um, you uncovered the true cost. And, and as you could see from this list, essentially those questions were answered because we could say, okay, some of this is coming from CPA. We can right. well, take it off of our plate because it's CPA and we it can wasn't take it off on the of our list, plate. Though. Fred, it wasn't on that wasn't on the list that was in your head, which is very appreciated. Well, but in the future, well, no, 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 we have a list of projects that in now going through them, we can say, right. you know, what the other potential funding sources were. Mm -hmm. right. But, but this, this is the list of projects that want to be done. Yes. You know, um, I, I, a great example, when you look at the list of, you know, the wish list that Brian put up a short time ago. One of those was a tutor. Well, okay, but that is so pie in the sky. You know, who can make a decision on, on that? It's It now comes, if the school department wants a tutor for math at a certain time, they got to come up with a number. You got to tell us what, what this is for, when, how long they're going to work. All of those but dynamics. Beyond that, Paul, I think that it would be a good idea. I would propose that this committee set down a guideline that we not fund anything that will require additional town annual funding. That's a good Lynn point. software, for instance, requires additional funding, but there's already money in her budget because she's already funding annual subscription yeah. fees. Yeah. Yes. Fred, you, you mean funding a tutoring program would would us be saying, okay, we're going to throw the initial money in, but now the <laughs> annual budget is going to go up right? because of what we've told you you have to do. It's open-ended. So right. Can I make a proposal? It's 725 now. Um, and I mean, I don't know, have we officially agreed that we're going to do hour and a half meetings, I think? So we're reaching the end. Um, what I'd love to do is, um, given Brian's um, pro possible evaluation criteria, um, maybe at the next meeting, we go over this list, add, subtract, whatever, so that we're ready. Um, we've, we've done our practice now with, and, and come up with a good proposal for the select board, but let's, we can now look at this and um, use this at a, a, a more um, open-ended, um, uh, less time-constrained way, but then we can use that 
for the proposals that'll come to us next. Does that sound good? And, yep. and that includes, you know, we have the list that Brian shared with us that includes entities like the Board of Health of whom I'm one. We can look at those and get back to those groups and say, okay, here's the criteria we'd like you to reflect on those and give us, give us numbers, give us sources or lack thereof, you know, that you've looked at other places, that sort of thing. Does that- and it, Along the lines of what the Capital Improvement Committee does, they get proposals in, look at them and then go back with questions to the submitting party right. to flesh out the proposal. Yeah. Right. That sounds good. You have to be ready to defend the request. And the Capital Planning Committee has to defend the request to the Finance Committee. And then the budget is put together. But, you know, it's a process. Yeah. Um, so uh, actually, uh, Fred, to clarify then, so, so we have this initial list that Brian has shared, yeah. and we're also going to be looking um, broad, more broadly. So next time we can identify other entities that we haven't thought of yet. Um, what, and and we're, we can look at the list and, and decide, gee, some of these look good. We'll go back and say, okay, now flesh these out. Um, right. and, and, and at the same time, does it make sense though going forward to say to groups that are making proposals, here are our criteria can you fit yours into it so that we don't have to go back and, and ask for more? Or do yes, we can do that, but no one is ever gonna give you a proposal that is perfect the first time. Which is fine. I, I guess I'm thinking right. um, um, a bit more, without being overwhelmed, a bit more information to begin with could help because like there may be some things on the list that at first glance, Look like well why would they want that but if they flesh it out a little it'd be like oh okay they really right. do want it you know what i'm saying absolutely we yeah. we should give as much information okay to the proposers as we can with the understanding that we will get their proposal in and go back with more questions yes good yeah. okay yeah. cool All right um and or that in some cases we will just say no like you know, for instance, I keep going back to that tutoring proposal. We would, I would say, we should say no because it commits the town to spending beyond the scope of this money. And maybe what we can be doing in in this um, list that we're sending out is saying we are we are not interested in funding long term things that increase the annual budget. Well, we're not we're not interested in establishing something which will then later have to go into the annual town budget. We want to be a closed ended project of some sort. Right. Other like than a one time buy. Because there are going to be things that are going to need maintenance. So there is that. But anyway, I, I think I get the point. Right. Um, so should we come up with a next time? Or do you want to do a Google poll or whatever doodle poll? I think the Google poll, Google calendar, is probably the best way to do it. We don't. Yeah. It, yeah. It was hard coming up with this date because right. we were under a time pressure. Right. Right. Good. Okay. Yep. So Brian, can you send that out? Awesome. All right. Well, we and did. Something. This is good. Can I ask a question? Oh. When's the special town meeting on Wednesday? Yep. Six six o'clock. At the town office or is it virtual? A uh, town offices. Thank you. Six o'clock sharp. Um, do we want to meet in person or remote? In person. We could. I'd love to meet in person, but honestly, it's. I know, Bob. I understand. I just. I mean, I'm still in the office right now. We can do hybrid or yeah. hybrid. I should say hybrid sounds good. All remote or hybrid. Well, I'll go to Bob's house. <laughs> no. Yeah. Hybrid. We've actually got. I don't know. Now, very good equipment at town offices to do hybrid meetings. It's tremendous. Absolutely tremendous. All right. Yeah, that sounds, I mean, if, if I can, I'd love to make it, but yeah. I'll pick you up on the way over. Thank you. Oh, that's so nice. I appreciate that. <laughs> so we'll do a hybrid meeting? Okay, so a yep. move we adjourn to a date to be determined. I second that. All right. All right. Thanks, All guys. in favor? Bye. 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 Good night. All right, good night.